sometimes can be really handy for nucleic acid purification, such as a mini prep. But if you have a lot of samples or if you have more volume than you can load in a single go, then these vacuum manifolds might be the way to go. So instead of having to go back and forth from the centrifuge a bunch of times, this vacuum manifold, basically all you have to do is put your liquid into the column and then instead of centrifuging it to pull things through, you turn on the vacuum. Um, and this is going to pull things through without you having to go in and out of the centrifuge over and over and over. So the concept's really simple, but there are a few tips I have, um, so let's get into them. Basically, first off, you can either put your columns like in through a stopcock or directly onto here. If they're directly onto here, then you control them all at the same time. If you have the stopcock, you can either keep them open to control them all at the same time, or you can control them individually um, by turning the stopcock so that it's um, closed or it's open. And basically, you want to make sure that you're only pulling the vacuum through when you have liquid on there. So once the liquid's all pulled through, you wanna turn off that vacuum or you wanna stop or the stopcock because what's gonna happen is if you don't, you're gonna be kind of harming the membrane. You're just like dry, super, super drying it out. Um, and so you might even see like cracks form in the membrane. That's happened to me. And I'm guessing it's not very good for my sample purity and quantity and yield and all that stuff. So only, so put all your liquid in and then suction it out. Um, so you can either, if you're controlling them individually, just keep an eye on them um, and stop them once it goes through. If you're trying to do things like over in a row, like time things out so you can do one wash and then the next and then the next, or you can fill them all up, backing them through and stop them. Speaking of stopping things, you wanna make sure that all the holes that are not being used are going to be stopped up. So your manifold might have like 20 or 24 of these. And basically you want to make sure that the stopper is in um, or you have a stopcock in there that is stoppered. Um, so these stoppers tend to kind of work a little better than having just a stopcock that's in the off position. Um, but do what works for you, find what works for you, um, whatever is simplest. It's because you also don't want to make sure that you're, you want to make sure you're not like losing these things. Um, so just keeping the stoppers in there can be helpful as well just for that regard. But you need to make sure that all these holes are covered and tightly sealed or else you're not going to get a good vacuum forming. Speaking of vacuum, you also aren't going to get a vacuum formed unless you have the seal in the end. Um, and so basically, the seal, you can take it out to clean this out, but you need to make sure that seal is in in order to make the vacuum. Now, in a pinch, if you lose this, well, you can order a new one, um, it's happened, um, but if you don't have time to order a new one or it hasn't come in yet, in a pinch, you can basically just jam it in with one of the, with the 15 mil Falcon tube. It's not ideal, but it does make a seal. Um, so that'll help with that. Okay, one thing that you need to be careful with when you're using a vacuum manifold is that you don't have the little like tube bottom for to um, that you can easily label. So normally you have some sort of collection tube that you're going into, but in this case, you're just going straight into the vacuum manifold. So you need to make sure that you're labeling these, um, these things themselves and not just the tube that you're gonna put them into so you can keep track of them. I recommend labeling at the, like the very top ledge and this way you can, you're still gonna be able to see it when you put it into that collection tube, um, into that waste collection tube and then into your sample collection tube. Now, when you're doing the washes, which is really helpful um, to basically do it with like a multi-channel pipette for the washes. So for the loading, you're gonna have to actually do them individually, but for the washes, you can use, um, a, I'm not, did I say multi-channel? I meant a repeater pipette, where basically you suck it up once and you can push the same amount on, through over and over. Now you might have a repeater pipette that doesn't have the exact volume that it says, like it says like 750 mils wash, or it's micro, uh, yeah. No, 750 microliters of wash. And if you're using one of these 10 mil ones, it only goes by 100 microliters. So I just use 800 microliters, it works fine. When you do the washes, you want to make sure though that you're not actually getting liquid on the outside of these tubes, especially with the wash, which has ethanol in it, that's going to wash off your label probably. And then even if you labeled it, well, now it's not labeled and now the label too can go and it can actually leach into, into your DNA sample, which would not be good. So make sure that when you're squirting things in, you're squirting it in and not on the side. 
but there is going to be a little bit probably gets on the side and so before you go and you elute your sample so you do your washes you're actually going to go in centrifuge it okay it's just one centrifuge it's not as big as all the other set having to centrifuge for each of the wash steps but you are going to want to centrifuge it before you actually elute your sample before you put the like water or the elution buffer on there to get your sample off because that liquid on the outside of here if it were in a centrifuge before that liquid would be would be pulled down but when it's in the vacuum the vacuum force isn't being applied out here and so only this vacuum is being applied into the middle so anything on the outside is going to still be there when you go to a loot and then it's going to get sucked down in that step with your sample so instead you want to basically centrifuge it to make sure it's totally dry get all that ethanol out so that you don't then have core purity and then you go and you load your gel and there's ethanol in there and it pops right out and out of the well which is not good so do that centrifuge spin to dry things out do that in your waste reservoir and then transfer it into your sample collection reservoir your sample collection tube add your um elution liquid um give, let it sit a minute and let it spin and then you can have a dna purification for the win so basically these are really helpful for mini preps they're also helpful if you have um if you're doing some sort of purification where you're trying to combine multiple samples onto a single column which is a larger volume that like you can only load like 800 microliters or so in one of these but say you have multiple um, cell pellets you want to combine these plasmids so you can get a really high concentration or high yield um, what you can do is you can load the same column multiple times and by doing this though you won't, don't want to have to go back and forth to the centrifuge over and over so you can just do it in here i've also used it for like rna extractions i use this like direct sol kit basically it goes like from the trisol you go from the trisol to a column and if you have a large volume what you can do is you can just kind of keep loading it over and over to get it all um to get it all concentrated on here and then wash it and elute it for some of the purification columns, they say like to do, there's only certain steps, like the loading step that you can do on a vacuum manifold. I haven't like risked doing the wash steps on those, but I do do the wash steps for my mini preps on here if I have a lot of samples or if I have a large volume in this sort of thing. So it comes in really, really handy. And I was the first time I saw one of these, I had no clue what it was. And so if you're wondering what this was, it's just a vacuum manifold. You put your tubes in here, you attach the vacuum line, you pull the liquid through, and hopefully it helps you.